Okay, so this is our first example on moments uh, for uniform rods. So here we've got CD is a uniform rod of length 5 meters and a mass 10 kilograms. The rust rests on supports at C and E. Uh, DE is 1.5 meters. Calculate the magnitude of the normal direction at each of the supports. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're go I'm going to draw a sketch. Okay, so I'm just going to draw a sketch off the rod. So there we go. And uh, we've got CD, so C is the beginning of the rod, D is the end of the rod. And it's a length 5 meters, so we know it's 5 meters long. And the rod rests on supports at C, which is at the end of the rod here. So there's a support at C there, just a little uh, triangle for the support with the rod on top of it. And this is another support at E, okay? So E is somewhere else on the rod. Um, so we'll clone like that. And we know that E is 1.5 meters away from D. So here we've got D, 1.5 meters, but the rod's two, uh, five, so in the middle is 2.5, so we'll put about there, 1.5 meters. Okay, so the whole thing's five meters. This distance from D to E is 1.5 meters here, 1.5. And from C to E, because the whole thing's five, that's gonna then obviously leave 3.5 meters from C to E, and that's the rod. Now it says a uniform rod. A uniform rod means that its mass um, is, or its weight is going to be acting in the centre of the rod. So we're going to add on its weight. Um, its weight is going to be a downward force from the middle, okay, because it's uniform. Sometimes it's not uniform. Um, it'll say that it's a non-uniform rod in the question, or it might leave the word uniform off, and that means that its uh, weight can be acting anywhere on it, and then you'll, you'll either have to find that or it'll tell you in the question. So its mass is 10 kilograms. So that means its weight's going to be 10g acting downwards there. Okay, and I'm just going to label that distance on it. So from C to E is 3.5 meters, and from C to the point of um, its weight is then going to be 2.5 meters there. It says calculate the magnitude of the normal reactions at each of the supports. So it's going to be a normal reaction here at C. Uh, let's call it R1. And then there's going to be a normal reaction at E here. Let's call it R2. And we've got to find the normal reactions at each of those. Okay, so first of all, we know that if we've got this rod, there's a few things we can do. First of all, we can have a look at the moments. Another thing what, uh, we can do is we can look at the forces up and forces down on the rod. Okay, uh, because it's in equilibrium, we know that they're going to be the same. So clockwise moments, so they're going to be the same as anti-clockwise moments, and likewise, the forces up are going to equal the forces down. So first of all, let's have a look at taking some moments. So what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the moments at the point C. The reason why I'm going to take the moments at the point C is because if I take the moments here, I can ignore this R1 because obviously the distance times the per, uh, the distance times the force or well, zero times R1 is going to be zero. So that's just going to it means that you can just sort of get rid of that R1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take moments um, about the point C. So if I do that, and this is where I'm going to take moments about, okay, obviously the one acting through C won't have a turning effect on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this force, uh, this force downwards here, and we're going to do the moment for that one. And we're going to do the force here, the normal direction E, and look at the turning force there, or turn effect there. So uh, first of all, let's take moments about the point C. Let's look at the clockwise moments, clockwise moments. So if you're at C, clockwise moments will be the force down. Okay, so that'll be acting in the clockwise direction. So it's clockwise moment, which that's gonna be 2.5, because it's 2.5 meters, and that's gonna be times by the force, which is 10G. And that's gonna equal the anti-clockwise moment, anti-clockwise moments. And well, if you're at C, well, this R2 is going to be acting in the anti-clockwise direction. And its distance is 3.5, so 3.5 times R2. Now, that means we can easily work out our R2. So we're just going to quickly do 2.5 times 10 times 9.8. So the left-hand side here is 245 Newton meters. And it's going to be equal to the, uh, the moment anti-clockwise. So it's going to be 3.5 R2. Two. Actually, I'll leave off the units for the minute. I'll add them all at the very end. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to then do is just divide by 
3.5, so 245 divided by 3.5 gives me 70. So R2 will equal 70 newtons. So the force here at E, that normal reaction, is going to be equal to 70 newtons. Fantastic. So that's the first bit we've got to do. It wanted the normal magnitude, the normal reaction at each of the supports. So we found out this one is 70 newtons. And now I need to find this normal reaction. Now there's two ways to do it. I could take moments about another position on the rod. So I've taken the moments at A at C. The logical place where if you want to take moments again to take the moments about would be at E. And that way, if you take the moments at E, you've then got this force going around anti-clockwise, and then you've got this force going around the clockwise, and you can put them equal to each other. Or alternatively, rather than taking moments, you can look at the rod and say the forces up will equal the forces down. What I'm gonna do is that just for fun, I'm gonna do it both ways just to show you how you can find this R1. So, first of all, Really simply, forces up equal forces down. So if I was to do that, forces up, well, that's going to be R1 plus R2, and that's going to equal the forces down, which would be 10G. So it's going to be R1 plus R2, I know that's 70, and that equals 10G, so that's 10 times 9.8, which would be 98. I'm just taking that off, it'll give me R1 will equal 28 newtons. So I found that that's equal to 28 newtons. Alternatively, um, I took the moments about C on purpose because that was where one of the normal reactions was and obviously the distance times that zero times that would give you zero so it means you just had two other uh, uh, forces that you had to work out the moments for. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm now going to take the moments about uh, the point E. So moments about E. And if I do that, Obviously, if I'm at E, okay, I've got one force, uh, one uh, moment which will be going around in the anti-clockwise direction, and one in the clockwise direction. Um, again, I have to start with clockwise equal anti-clockwise. So I do the clockwise one first of all. So if I'm at E, the clockwise one will be this moment here, okay. So the distance is three point five. So three point five times by R one. And that's what we're trying to find. Great. Equals. And let's work out the other moments. Now you've got to be careful here because it's obviously the distance times the force. Now the distance, if it was 3.5 across, that's 2.5. Well, that's what. So the distance here is going to be one meter. Okay. So it's going to be one times by the 10g going down. So it's going to be one times 10g, which would be one times 10g. And that will give me 3.5 r1 equals, well, one times 10g, if you do that, it's one times 10 times 9.8, which is 98 newtons. And if I do 98, actually 98 newton meters, uh, I just leave the units off until the end, 98. And if I just do 98 divided by 3.5, it gives me my answer of 28, so R1 equals 28. Personally, I would have used the forces up equals forces down approach. That's our first example.